Welcome to the next episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Generation Next Tournament here on Homeboys. Today we're going to have Axel Brody versus Zane Truesdale. So going over Axel's deck, uh, he runs a volcanic deck uh, and he also only plays fire pyro type monsters. So really, really limited as far as what months what good cards we can throw into the deck so i mostly just kept it volcanic uh and then threw in inferno in the side deck because it was something that i think he was seen playing but it also kind of complements the burn strategy overall but essentially the entire deck revolves around the blaze accelerators and uh low attack monsters these are uh, shells or bullets you can call them as well so with the Blaze Accelerator cards, uh, you have the original, and then you can send it to the graveyard if you have an extra space in your spell trap zone to upgrade to the Tri Blaze Accelerator. And essentially, by throwing away a Pyro monster um, from your hand, you can go ahead and destroy any monster on the field, but you're not allowed to attack for that turn. Uh, if you use the OG, the monster you send has to be 500 or less attack points, but if you use Tri-Blaze, it can be any pyro monster in your hand, and you also get to do 500 damage, which could be amazing if you end up drawing one of your volcanic scatter shots, because with scatter shot, when he goes to the graveyard, your opponent loses 500, and then if he went to the graveyard because of one of your blaze accelerators, you can throw away two other copies from your hands or decks, and then right geki your opponent's field and then on top of that do another 1000 damage so if you were to combine one copy of this with blaze accelerator i believe that's off the top of the head 2000 points of damage plus destroying every single monster that they have could be very very deadly then another monster to really look out for against this deck is Volcanic Counter because when it's in the graveyard, the next time that you receive damage, Volcanic Counter automatically banishes himself from the grave and reflects that damage at your opponent as well. Uh, so this takes a lot of strategy to correctly pull off and it takes a little bit of baiting as well since the user doesn't have control over what damage gets reflected. Uh, Volcanic Rocket is easily the most important monster in the entire deck because he searches the Blaze Accelerators uh, straight from your deck. Then the big boss monster is Volcanic Doomfire who can only be summoned by getting rid of a face-up Tri-Blaze Accelerator. Whenever he destroys a monster by battle and he goes to the graveyard, he can destroy all of your opponent's monsters and do 500 damage per monster. So he can be really nice and with a big 3000 attack really hard to get off but that's why in the side deck we play three copies of blade accelerator reload now while this does qualify as tri blaze accelerator it's also kind of sucks because it's a trap card meaning you have to wait one turn but not only does tri blaze not stop your entire battle phase it can give you some draw power so plus and minuses uh for the most part the rest of his deck has to do with a little bit of burn here and there or you know a little bit of a recovery in volcanic recharge i don't know why this is here i'll figure out what to do with that later i'll give you an update if axel survives or whatnot and really that's it he does have a good amount of draw cards in blasting vein destroying his own spells and traps to get cards to his hand or volcanic cyclone which can potentially mst multiple cards but it also costs you your hand but you get to draw anyway so really just balances out and uh, there's not too much to talk about in the side deck it's really just multiple copies of some of his main deck cards there's volcanic queen here though which is really interesting uh, you contribute an opponent's monster in order to summon her to their side of the field uh, the person who controls this loses a thousand points of damage at the end of their turn unless they tribute another monster except for volcanic queen herself so could put somebody into a into a predicament but with 2500 attack points could also easily backfire because as you see axel doesn't run any sort of way to stop attacks so we'll see how he does and now on to zane's deck now while zane truesdale was one of the strongest duelists in the entire show you can see that his deck building uh was not actually his strong suits and so 
writing really, really carried him to a lot of those victories. He only played a very small number of monsters. With Cyber Dragon being a tribute monster, even though it has an amazing effect, it could brick. And then you have these monstrosities that people dare call Cyber Dragons. And they're just really, really hard to summon, and in total they take up four spaces in the deck. Uh, so I had to really just throw in more modern support just to kind of give him more monsters he could draw. Otherwise this would be three copies of Proto Cyber Dragon, which would be really gross. But essentially everybody knows Cyber Dragon is more or less a fusion deck. They have beatdown strategies, more specifically OTK beatdown strategies. They have card removal in some instances. And being machines, they have access to a couple of different techniques. Uh, they have access to Overload Fusion here, which is actually really important. Because in the anime, Overload Fusion can bring out any machine fusion. Not just the Chimera techs, as they were supposed to be uh, dark machine monsters. So Overload Fusion could potentially allow you to fusion summon really any of the three Cyber Dragon fusions that you have out here which could be really really amazing. The other thing to note is that Fusion Sage is incredibly powerful and th the reason I only play one poly is because Power Bond is also considered polymerization and it has all the regular effects that we've all come to know. So. Fusion Sage can search Power Bond, so can Cyber Pharos, but he's mostly here just for the defensive body. Another really, really powerful card potentially is Time Fusion. So you can take any fusion monster that was destroyed, I believe, and by banishing a card in your hand, you can revive that fusion uh, one turn in the future with the stipulation that it's not allowed to attack the turn that it comes back. Um, another really amazing spell card that he plays is Battle Fusion, and the anime version of Battle Fusion isn't restricted only to when a fusion monster is involved in the battle. It's for any monster. So this is an honest for any monster in the game, and that's very, very beautiful. Uh, the last two cards to really make note of in the main deck are Cybernetic Revolution. By tributing any Cyber Dragon, uh, you can bring out any one of your fusions for about two turns and then it gets destroyed. I believe Time Fusion works really well with Cybernetic Revolution, but I haven't read too deep into it, so we're going to have to see. The last card in the main deck to really go over is going to be Cyber Network. When you control Cyber Dragon, you can banish a monster that's Light Machine from your deck. And uh, after your third standby phase, this destroys all of your own spells and traps. But when it gets destroyed, you can go ahead and bring out as many of your banished Light Machines as possible. They just can't attack or use their effects that turn, but that allows you to either go into a fusion in a single turn, a really good monster, or one of your Xyz. I am playing one Cyber Dragon Siger in here. Uh, it can really just aid the entire beatdown strategy at the cost of two. And if you end up with, you know, two weaker Cyber Dragon monsters, Seeger can be a, a decent option to go into. Now the side deck has a lot that you can really go over. We have Cyber Dragon Dry, who can turn all of your different machines into level 5 so that you can go into Cyber Dragon Nova. You have another copy of Veer, who can really buff up all of your monsters more or less. You have Nashter and Hertz, who just by themselves they have really useful effects, but in combination with machine duplication, they can easily get you out two OG Cyber Dragons straight from your hand or deck, so that can be really, really amazing. Of course you have to run one Cyber Dragon Infinity, no more because then it would be incredibly disgusting and broken and Zane would just guarantee to win this entire tournament. Uh, Cyber Eternity Dragon is also a really amazing move to go for, especially if you get the Cybernetic Revolution because he he can provide fusions with protections from the graveyard, so you don't need him to stick around. But if you do fusion summon him the traditional way, 4000 is a lot to try to get over for most decks. Then of course Cybernetic Overflow, and only one copy is necessary with three Cyber Dragon cores to search it, and this is a really really good removal card that the deck has access to. Now the question is, how many round ones will Zane be able to win with only 18 monsters out of 47? and. A lot of those 18 are just really not too good. 
Uh, we'll see how he ends up performing against Axel right now. Okay, so Axel Brody is going to be starting off this duel, and it doesn't look like he really has too much to go on. Even his face down is going to be a bluff here because he doesn't have monsters to trigger it, so he's just going to have to pass. And Zane is going to open up with the Cyber Phoenix, which is really, really nice to start with because if it dies, Zane can go ahead and draw a card, but as long as it's in attack mode, he can negate spells and traps that targets machines, which effectively shuts off his Blaze Accelerator from being able to do anything. Instead, anyways, Axel Brody doesn't realize this, and it fails to trigger, so instead he sets a shell and decides to pass. For Zane's turn now, he has Cyber Dragon's Vi, who can actually rise up to 1800, he knows that Axel doesn't really have anything, so he decides to go in with the Cyber Phoenix and then attack directly for 1500. Now on Axel's turn, he pays 500 to search for another Volcanic Shell, and he uses Blasting Vein to get rid of his Trap card in order to get two more cards, allowing him to draw into the Volcanic Rocket, who can now search for the Triblaze Accelerator. However, Triblaze Accelerator still can't pop anything, but with the 1900 body, he doesn't need to do that. Dane ends up drawing a Cyber Repair Plant off of Phoenix, which isn't live yet, but could be really, really good later on. So using Instant Fusion, he pays 1000 get out Panzer Dragon. And while it has a good effect for when it gets destroyed, really it's only here as an extra body. Spy can reveal a spell card in Zane's hand in order to become the Cyber Dragon. And so by doing this, he's able to fusion summon with Panzer for the Chimeratech Over Dragon. But in addition to this, by putting Cyber Dragon's Vi in the graveyard, he's able to now activate the Cyber Repair Plant to get another Cyber Dragon monster to his hand for later. Not that he needs it though, because he's gonna get over the 1900 body with Battle Fusion in order to gain 1900 himself. So now with that big damage, Axel is left with a measly 1600 life points, but Zane happened to have a defusion in order to split up the Over Dragon into Panzer and Zvi and go in for game while not even utilizing all the other combos he had access to. Here's game two and Axel's gonna be starting off by setting a reload and popping it with Blasting Vein for two cards. But by banishing a reload, he can go ahead and dump a shell so that he could get a search off. He thankfully also has a second copy of Reload which he sets along with his Volcanic Force who can go ahead and toss out a Triblaze Accelerator to summon his Volcanic Doomfire from anywhere. On Zane's turn, he opens up with just a Proto Cyber Dragon. But on the summon of any Cyber Dragon, since Proto changes his name as soon as he hits the board, Cyber Dragon Veer can actually hit the board as well and give all Cyber Dragons 500 extra attack and defense points. Playing it safe with three trap cards though, he decides to put Veer in defense mode. So Zane swings in for a 1600, and before he actually wraps up his turn, Axel's gonna go for that reload to get a quick draw off on both people's turns. So here he's gonna use Flaming Barbed Wire. And Barbed Wire can put attack position monsters into defense mode and change their original defense to zero, meaning that he's gonna be left with 500 defense after the effective veer. The only downside being that when you use Barbed Wire, you can't attack directly this turn. But Axel's not planning to anyway, so it works out. He uses Shell to search out another copy and then banishes one in his graveyard for Inferno. With 1100 attack and Proto Cyber Dragon only having 500, this could potentially activate Inferno's effect in order to deal a massive 1500 damage to make up for the fact that he can't attack directly. Then he uses Reload in order to get another draw and he happens to go into the Volcanic Rocket which is perfect since he has a normal summon yet, giving him another 1900 body and access to a Blaze Accelerator card. So going in with Inferno trying to get that 1500 damage, Zane actually activates Attack Reflector Unit to whip out the Cyber Barrier Dragon with a massive 2800 and now Zane has no monsters that Axel's able to kill in battle. So Axel is forced to flip over the Volcanic Force, allowing him to bring out the Volcanic Doomfire in exchange for his draw card. But now that he's able to pop a monster, Doomfire can destroy both Cyber Dragons, allowing him to mysteriously attack directly, because I swear that Barbed Wire said he wasn't able to do that, so I guess the card wasn't programmed correctly. Uh, either way, the life points are now about tied, and on Zane's turn, Axel activates Draw Blast, initiating a 1000 damage assault. In response, all he really has is a face down monster, and since Zane never fusion summoned this duel, uh, every card in his hand really is dead right now. 
And to add insult to injury, not only is Axel going to dump a card from his deck, but he's going to use Ceasefire to stack on an extra 2000 burn damage, and put a Volcanic Counter in the grave just in case Zane did have something. So going into a Flame Vixen just to flex on this man, uh, Axel is actually going to run over the Pharaohs easily and take this round. Now at this point, both of the rounds have been won due to the other player bricking, so it's interesting to see where this is going to go, especially because as we can see, Axel has bricked already. Zane starting off really, really hard with the Cyber Dragon Core in order to get another trap card, and he's using the different dimension capsules, so we have no idea what card he's sending to turns into the future. He also has set 3, meaning he has a really strong backboard presence. But on Axel's turn, he's still not done because he's gonna use the Cyber Network in order to start stacking up monsters in his Banish Pile for 3 turns down the line for a potential big fusion play. Thankfully, Axel has the Volcanic Slicer, so he does have a body that he can put onto the board, but he doesn't have too much else, so if Volcanic Slicer ever gets moved out the way, then Axel's more or less done for in this situation, and unfortunately for him, Zane has the Cybernetic Revolution to instantly evolve Cyber Dragon Core into the Cyber Twin Drag. Zane also calls back his Cyber Dragon Core so that he has Cyber Dragon to use Network's effect once again, but not before Axel activates Draw Blast to try to sneak in at least a thousand damage, because what else can he really do here? Wasting no time, Zane attacks in with the Cyber Twin Dragon, however, a monster summoned with Cybernetic Revolution actually isn't allowed to attack directly. So, since it's going to be destroyed at the end of this turn anyways, he decides that it's best to go into Cyber Dragon Seeger so he can be left with a 2100 on board. And since his name is also Cyber Dragon still, he can still use Network's effect. Axel once again has absolutely nothing to really work with, so he sets Cease Fire and Counter. It turns out that the card that Zane actually removed from play earlier was just a card that he didn't want to end up bricking with later, since he has enough really going for him that he doesn't need the extra card. Honestly, an absolute flex in my opinion. Now Zane is going to go for the Fusion Sage in order to grab a Power Bond. He decides to banish Pharaohs for whatever reason, and he attacks over the counter, passing it back over to Axel. Now, with Volcanic Counter in play, Axel Brody has to be incredibly smart with what he decides to do and in what order, but unfortunately he draws a Tri-Blaze Accelerator instead of one of his copies of Reload. If he had Reload, then he could have easily gone into Doomfire and even revived it again in about uh, the next turn or the same turn or whenever. So Zane gets one more Banish, and since his only monster is in the extra monster zone, come turn 3 and he gets 5 monsters out from his removed from play pile. Now keep in mind these monsters aren't allowed to use their effects, so Cyber Dragon's Vi isn't allowed to change his name. But Zane already has the power bond he searched for, but in response Axel Brody is going to activate his ceasefire to do a massive 3000 points of damage. So that automatically removes Zane option to go for the Cyber End Dragon because if he doesn't kill this turn that would mean that Zane himself loses. Instead he has to settle for a second copy of the Cyber Twin Dragon which has 5600 and to make things even worse he has a copy of Cyber Phoenix. So if any of his machines get targeted by a card effect, he can automatically negate it. However, he's not allowed to attack this turn due to the effect of Cyber Network, so he has to pass and take the 2800. Putting him with only 1200 is really, really dangerous, because out of every single monster on his field, none of them can kill Axel within a single attack, meaning Volcanic Counter can easily win this game for Axel Brody, even though he opened up with an absolutely pathetic hand. Now here, Axel draws into the 1200 Volcanic Blaster, which he summons in attack mode. He attempts to swing into the Cyber Twin Dragon in order to activate his Volcanic Counter from the graveyard and snatch victory out of Zane's hand, but he actually activates Defusion to remove it from the field, meaning that there is no play that he has left that can save him in the next turn. So he simply decides to crash into the Phoenix, 
and he passed his turn not really being able to accomplish anything after all. With no monsters left on the field, Zane decides to stun a little more by going into the very useless Cyber Laser Dragon so that he can have extra bodies on the field for an overload fusion in order to take out Axel with the massive 8,800 attack. Zane Truesdale has won the duel.